Hi, everyone. My name's Court Chilton, and I uh, hope you're glad uh, to see you here. I hope uh, you've uh, joined to learn a little bit more about the Advanced Management Program at MIT. I'm the faculty director. We're joined tonight by an alumna of the program, Mahua Mukherjee. Uh, what you were just seeing there was some video of the program. I think we're going to just show it one more time. Uh, as we give people just a min another minute or two to join, and then uh, we'll show, uh, we'll get started. So just hang tight, watch the video. This is video from what goes on in the classroom, outside the classroom, uh, shows you some of the work we do, how we uh, deliver the program at MIT. Jean-Luc, you found the comments section. That's good. Okay, thanks again for joining us. Uh, again, my name's Court Chilton. I'm the faculty director of the MIT Advanced Management Program. So glad you're here. Um, I'm joined tonight by an alumna of our program. Uh, I'm in Massachusetts, but Mahua Mukherjee is in Bangalore, India. It's so great to have someone join us from the other side of the world. Uh, thanks for being here, Mahua. Um, My pleasure. My pleasure, Court. Uh, just before we get started, uh, please put any questions or comments you have uh, on the right side of your screen. You can see the comments section. Uh, Jean-Luc Just, I hope I'm pronouncing his name properly, uh, has already sort of uh, begun to model the way. And we'll try to answer those in real time if we can. Uh, we may... Um, want to get to them as we come to a slide further in the future. So I'll just sort of guide us there. Um, what we're planning to do tonight is talk a little bit about the program and what it's like. And I'll do that for a few minutes. I have a few slides about that. And then we wanted to, we thought it might be interesting for you to hear not so much from MIT people, but from people who've been through the experience, uh, like Mahua. And then we'll save time at the end, plenty of time for open uh, questions, whatever you might want to ask. All right, so what I thought I'd do just quickly, just to sort of give you a little bit more detail about the purpose today, um, let's uh, show uh, just sort of what we plan to cover. And um, the goal is to talk a little bit about MIT. Uh, it's a sort of a special place. And um, then also what it, specifically, what do we do around the Advanced Manager Program? Uh, if you're thinking about attending, Mahua is going to think, talk about how she thought about going to the program and then also what she's taken away. Um, and what we plan to cover is a little bit about MIT, as I said, the objectives of the Advanced Management Program, why many executives choose to come. It's a little bit different experience at MIT than uh, other business schools that also have Advanced Management Programs. And then we want to be able to have plenty of time for conversation back and forth, respond to your questions that are uh, in the comments or the chat, as it were. All right, so I'm going to jump right into this uh, just because we just have an hour um, and just talk a little bit about um, MIT for a moment because MIT is deeply woven into the advanced management program. So you can see on the left of the slide here the, the logo and the motto of MIT, which is a mind and hand. And it's been that way since 1875. Basically, we think you don't really know anything until you've applied it, until you've used your hands and tried to build it, use it, whatever it is. So uh, there's knowledge, that's the mind part, but there's also the application of knowledge. And I think that stems from the fact that MIT was born as an engineering school, and we tend to take a sort of very engineery approach to things. It's like, you, you think you've got a way to do that? Let's model it. Let's try it. Let's see if it works in the field. And so in the advanced management program, we take a very similar approach, mind and hand. Um, and so what we're trying to do is make sure that we're also advancing the mission. The one on the top that you see to the right, that's the broad MIT mission to advance knowledge and educate people and help address the world's greatest problems. 
And then the lower right there is the Sloan, the business school mission, where we're, our goal is to develop principled, innovative leaders who improve the world. And then we have a research arm as well. It's very strong at MIT uh, that informs a lot of what we do in the classroom. So it's mind in hand. It's rigorous research behind what we're doing in the classroom and outside. Um, and it's all meant to help people address big problems, complex problems. And that's particularly the part of the intent of the uh, uh, the AMP. Since I mentioned the intent, uh, intent of the program, let me just talk quickly about the specific objectives of the Advanced Management Program. Uh, you can see that on this slide here, it's meant to provide, and these words are important, an intimate, transformative learning experience for mid-career people who, in many cases, already have an MBA. So this is not the basics of finance or operations or marketing. This is for people who've already maybe gotten those degrees or have had experience that more or less equals that. Um, and they want an integrated approach where they can apply concepts to their own development and to their own issues in their uh, the companies that they come from. Um, and specifically, we want to we focus on developing skills and providing tools and frameworks, ways of thinking that are useful in the C-suite, whether you're a startup executive or you work for a big company, um, you, you're thinking about systems, you're thinking about large enterprise type issues, that's our focus. Our focus also is we wanna um, connect the people that are in the AMP to each other, previous people who've come, alumna like Mahua, and also to enable them to connect in the future to MIT and Sloan that way, uh, in ways that'll be useful to them. And then to also know how the ecosystem works here. It's a unique ecosystem right around MIT, lots of startup activity, lots of tech, healthcare, really all sectors, but particularly prominent there. Uh, and we want you to be able to navigate that ecosystem and to derive value from it and hopefully also to contribute to it. So that's the goal. Now, one more thing, and then I'll keep going. When I say intimate and transformative, I want to say a couple of things about that. The group is by design small. Many AMPs have 80, 90, 100, maybe more people in them. Our group is limited to 35 uh, because of, we want people to have a deep connection to each other, to the program, to MIT. And we think we can do that better if we cap the enrollment at 35. We've never actually gotten to 35, but we've gotten to 30, 33. Um, but we we really don't want to go above 35 because it's about really having strong uh, connection in the classroom and outside. And we also think that enhances one other objective, which is people come to work on themselves a little bit as leaders. And we think that happens better in a smaller environment. Uh, and so we do things like coaching. We have people coach each other. Uh, and so we want it to be a very personal uh, experience that helps them uh, grow into their next job. Very often what made you successful to get where you are now um, is not going to be what's going to help you succeed in the future. Some of it will help you, but you may need to show up differently in the future as you navigate the C-suite issues that we talk about in the course. Okay. So uh, I'll say quickly a couple of things about who the profile is, what we're looking for, and what, what they're like. Generally, um, MIT and Sloan uh, look for students in general of all ages that have the qualities of the bullets you see on the left-hand slide. And then we add to that with the AMP, we're looking for people who have 15 to 20 years of experience, who've, who work across functions or geographies and business lines, they have to speak great English. We're delivering this in English live on the campus at MIT. We're building a hybrid version, not gonna be ready till fall of next year. Um, we are also looking for people who have had significant international exposure. Uh, the group is very global as I'll show you in a second. And we hope that they come with an agenda for change. Sometimes people come because they're wanting to do different things. Other people come with an issue that's important to their company that isn't getting fully addressed because of the pressure of the business, the day-to-day -day firefighting, et cetera. Um, and we want people who are gonna not only want to uh, connect with others, but they also wanna help others. Uh, it's not enough just to come with your own agenda, but you part of the agenda we hope is to help other people who are similar to you. So um, that's 
what we're looking for. What I want to talk a little bit about, well, who are these people who come? Where do they come from? So that's the next slide, which shows you a little bit about um, the geographies and the functions. Uh, generally speaking, we get a really diverse group of people in the room. The one big wedge you see on the pie chart on the left shows five Americans, but the Americans are in the minority, really. If we have 30 people, it would be unusual to have more than five people who came from the US. Most people come from Europe, uh, South America, and Asia. And they come from all different functions and sectors. We tend to get a lot of people who come from finance, tech, digital, science, but that's because in part of the relationship of MIT but we get people who in the room who might be a chief engineer for Boeing. And then we get someone who's a marketing director for an online gaming company. And sometimes we wonder, well, what are they gonna talk about? But when you're talking about enterprise issues, it turns out you have a lot in common. So um, the uh, we get a lot of people from Brazil. Um, I just noticed that uh, hello in the chat there. Uh, and so uh, we have a lot of alumna from uh, Brazil and in South America. But what you should hear is diverse, global, many sectors. And then the last thing I'll say is that I'd say about a 30 to 40% of the group come from fast growing startups that could scale quickly if they ran it right. And then we have people who come from large companies. They're 50%. And then the other sort of 10 to 20% are people who come from large nonprofits like the IMF um, or who come from the military, but who have big jobs. And so what everybody shares is they have large, complex jobs, and they're probably going to have large, complex jobs in the future. Um, I'll say quickly about why people come to AMP. Very quickly, a couple of slides about that. I'll show you the ecosystem. And then, Mahua, I'm going to come to you, OK? Uh, so the next sure. slide shows some of the reasons that people come. First is the faculty um, we choose are very senior. They have experience um, working with senior executives. So these are not junior faculty. These are people who have experience in the wider world. Very often, they have their own consulting businesses. They've worked with. Um, CEOs, C-level people, C-suite level people, but they've also worked with finance ministers, uh, policymakers around the world. That's who's teaching the program. And you can follow many of these people on Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. The other thing is part of this program, it's not part of most AMPs, is that we provide one-on-one -on -one coaching to each participant based on some of the personal assessments that you see in that third row there. Uh, we have a proprietary 360 degree leadership uh, feedback uh, report that the coaches are very experienced at working with senior executives. And um, they use that to help you think about who do you need to be as a leader for the job or the context that you'll be having after AMP. So it's a very high touch way of working on yourself as a leader. And hopefully that's part of uh, your motivation to come uh, if you decide to do this. The other thing is that it's about uh, we do people bring projects to work on that are important to their company and we devote time to helping each other with uh, business projects. And then we use a lot of we tend not to use cases. Uh, many AMPs have uh, their participants stay up late at night preparing the cases for the next day. We don't do that. We do use a couple of cases, three cases, four cases, but we're very much more likely to use a business simulation or other learning methods. So uh, it's all again about mind and hand applied. So those are some reasons that people come that are about the learning directly um, uh, for their jobs, for their own development. The next slide shows you the uh, ecosystem around MIT. All the things in red, that's the MIT campus. Everything else are, you can see the names of companies, you can see color coding for sectors. All It's a really vibrant community all around MIT. Lots of startups, thousands of them in all different sectors. And also big companies, Google, Apple, Microsoft are right across the street from 
that red circle you see on the slide there. So we have chances to go outside the classroom, see not only MIT labs and centers where they're doing interesting work that's relevant for a senior executive, but we also have a chance to go talk to other executives and see what they're up to. Many of them have an MIT connection. They'll know a little bit about what you're going through. Uh, and so it's just great to see how people in the MIT uh, environment or ecosystem uh, work. Last slide, and then I'll come to Mahua. Just a little bit more, I've been talking about site visits where we'll go to see companies like Akamai or a grid scale battery company called Ambry. Both of those companies were born out of MIT. Um, we'll go to see the Cambridge Innovation Center or another hub. Uh, there are many hubs and startup accelerators that we go to. Greentown Labs is a sustainability accelerator. There's one for biotech. And if we don't go to them as a group, we might find a way if you're interested in something that's happening in terms of that community, particular kind of startup community, we can also introduce you there. Uh, we have lots of executives come to us, both startup and large company. Um, we do lots of team building to bond this cohort, this relatively intimate cohort together. Um, and then we also provide lots of opportunities to connect with Sloan alumni, and the AMP alumni. In fact, AMP alumni come back during the delivery of the course to reconnect with MIT and each other and be part of the learning experience. And you'll, you'll meet them as well if you come. So that's a little bit about why people come both for the classroom and outside of the classroom. Um, what I wanna do now is turn a little bit to an alum of ours, uh, Mahua Mukherjee, and she came to the AMP. I, uh, it feels like yesterday, but I know it was more than, it's been longer than yesterday, Mahua. As I mentioned, yes. Mahua is in Bangalore. She had been working uh, at Cognizant, a big uh, consulting firm, before coming. Her husband, I think, was going to some to a program at MIT, the Sloan Fellows Program. Yeah, right. She delivers an MBA. And um, she came at a moment in time when she was thinking about doing something new. And the thing she's done that's new is she left the AMP and founded a company with another colleague of hers, and it's called The Star in Me. And it's a really cool and interesting company. And we're just so proud of Mo, I can't tell you. Uh, so I'll let her tell you about the company and what it does. But Mohua, welcome. And maybe you could say a little bit about what your company is and then back up and talk about how you thought about coming to the AMP in the first place. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Court. Uh, because when I was watching the video, a lot of memories were, uh, memory lanes were getting trickled and I was seeing those classrooms, the beer game and the whiteboards. Most important, I think, as and when we learn, the whiteboards keep getting filled in and you see those nuggets everywhere through the five weeks of uh, intervention. So before I talk about what I do now, which I will possibly cover a little, I think it's very important for the ones who are listening in now on where was I and why was it important for me to uh, explore uh, AMP uh, in the career uh, transition or the crossroad that I was in. And I would also take some examples of how I saw my classmates or my cohort was. So maybe that's going to give you certain thoughts while you are thinking. Uh, so I was a director uh, at Cognizant um, and I uh, was taking care of their operations consulting for a couple of regions. Um, uh, I had a little seed of thought of I wanted to start up, but uh, after 18 years of corporate career where I have no understanding of entrepreneurship before, neither have started my, I have did a lot of entrepreneurship um, experiences while at Cognizant, but I've not gone out and started it on my own. So I needed that um, boost and I think AMP was that boost where you come in and instead of feeling that I'm flying without a net, I kind of get those shields through the course. So that five week was really important for me. One, uh, it was, you needed a lot of learning before you're trying to build or initiate a platform solution uh, because that's a massive, um, uh, a massive aspect. So I think through the course, uh, I did beyond attending what was part of the curriculum, 
uh, court was always instrumental when I said, you know what, I need this piece of information. And I know this particular professor is amazing at it. Can I have a meeting set up uh, with him or her? And uh, I did that. So beyond the curriculum, which I anyways did, if any of you have certain things going on in your mind, AMP, faculty and court and uh, the support group will go out of the way to help you get to your narrative or storyboarding or your thought process, whatever you're trying to do. So I was in the transition of corporate to entrepreneurship. There were other uh, batchmates of mine in the cohort who wanted to accelerate in the journey of their corporate career. So they were possibly VP uh, in their organizations and large global MNCs. And they wanted to go a step up in uh, global roles. So we had different uh, uh, kind of um, people in our cohort. And uh, and one of the best thing is the diversity of the cohort and the global, global nature. So diversity, we had people from pharmaceutical, somebody who worked on cybersecurity. So you have very rich conversations uh, when you're going through the subjects. So when somebody is talking about um, strategy and a particular aspect of strategy, the way we would i would think i wouldn't think the way my my somebody sitting on my table is thinking and that's the uh, i think the most enriching exercise is is the cohort and the network that you build and um, in fact i was just telling court co some time back that you know any course or any any intervention with any institute that you do i think it's always the individual's initiative so we are all adults um so you know the way uh, i think I kept on leveraging my connections at MIT, including court. Whenever I've gotten stuck through my last three years of my startup and I needed help, it wasn't that AMP got done in that five weeks and I didn't have any contact after that. After three years, I still have connect. I still get help from uh, court and court then connects me to other professors whenever I need. Uh, Possibly they were part of as faculty in my course, or I can just introduce, hey, you know what? I was from AMP batch of 2018 and I'm working on this and I need this help. Would you, uh, I would like to set up a time with you. Can you help me do that? And I've gotten all of that through the last three years. So that's something that's very important for you to think is it's not a relationship that gets over in those five weeks. The relationship stays for life. So this is an association that you're doing for life and, and that's most important. And as senior we grow, I think we become very lonely and we need uh, these uh, kind of uh, network and support. Or I'm, I'm really, I'm, it's, it's absolutely true. We get lonely with many a times. There is an information overflow everywhere. I don't think information is a problem nowadays, uh, but I think, uh, you know, the right curation of conversation and knowledge is very important. And that's where, I have always come back uh, um, to you, Court, and you know how multiple times I've come back to you. And uh, then you have helped me get either it's professors, uh, uh, you know, uh, for getting into on my platform or getting help on understanding. I've gotten that help. And I'm sure many others in my cohort or alums uh, I know who are very, very active and, and they do that. And not only your cohort, it's the alum. So I also connect with, uh, uh, I will name uh, one of our alums, Mariana. Uh, she's in Spain. So while I work in India, I, you know, through the alum network, I connect with her in Spain. We are planning to do things together and we have done certain things together. So it's just not uh, your cohort, the faculty ecosystem that you can use. It can also the alums who kind of uh, resonate to the work that you are doing and will become partners in your uh, journey uh, whenever you know there is a uh, there is a need or uh, there is a uh, it can help you or that person grow in their career journey so yeah I, so that was my intent uh, court and and the relationship that I still kind of cherish yeah before we talk a little bit about what you're doing now, uh, that was um, and your maybe your experience of the program, I just wanted to uh, notice that there's a comment section about uh, from Dr. Rama Raju, uh, and uh, just what I can see there about you know can I come? Um, uh, it, the typically we're looking as I as it said on an earlier slide for people with 15 to 20 years experience, and we tend to get a lot of people who have deep technical backgrounds. Um, so we've had the heads of R&D for a number of companies who have come. Um, they usually aren't retired, 
uh, these people who come usually have sort of still more um, runway in their career. So that would be just a question of but, uh, what you want to do next. Um, but uh, we tend to get senior people, about half the group usually has a deep technical background and is hoping to acquire more leadership, more business acumen. That's a very common profile that we see. Um, Mahua, maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, your experience of the program. And, and what I'm thinking is that you could talk also how that led you to start up uh, the star in me. Sure. Yeah. So through the five weeks, I think I had uh, very little uh, idea of what I was getting into. And I'm happy that I did not have all the idea before. Uh, <laughs> if I would have had it, I might not have taken that leap and, and gone ahead. Um, uh, but it was also important uh, through that five weeks to get, a, a you know, decluttered a lot of thought uh, cloud that I had in my mind. So, uh, you know, in 2018, if somebody would have searched on my name or looked into my profile, what you would have seen is, uh, you know, my consulting and, and whatever I was doing. And I remember caught and when I was talking to Professor Ben Shields uh, on branding and how, how, what I was trying to do and how can I go there because nobody knew in the kind of work I was planning to do. So he did give me a lot of tips around how do I start building my brand while I'm trying to work on the new venture uh, mm -hmm. that I was cooking off. Yes. Uh, then at Professor Pere, I'd got multiple conversations with him on how do you uh, code a platform? I never knew what was coding a platform. So how do you start with a platform? What are the different sides of the platform? How does a network effect work? What does coding of a platform mean? So a lot of those things got have conversations during the process. Then I had conversation with Professor René Kerslein, where we're talking about the user experience part of it. When you build a platform, possibly LinkedIn is one of the amazing examples of a platform solution where you have a multi-site network effect and the user experience that all of us are seeing how LinkedIn grew for the last 20 years. So, so, so to get into a journey of building a platform is a long haul journey, but there are a lot of nuances that we have to keep in mind while we are kind of starting off and building um, the solution. Yes. So a lot of those understanding came like a, you know, like a fire hose uh, information on those five weeks. <laughs> so what I did was uh, there was a lot of notes gathered, uh, some structured, some unstructured. But those are some things I still, you know, kind of refer to while I'm building, while I'm tweaking uh, as I'm growing on the platform. So got it. And I remember quote beyond the classroom, which I always did, and professors came. I think I should take care of some of the lunch sessions also to fix meetings uh, so that we can extend uh, a bit and get a little more of that uh, personal time uh, yeah. and, and coaching. I, I, I remember you just talked about one on one coaching. It's very important. At least I since most of my career has been in India uh, uh, and in the tech services and consulting space, I did not experience one on one coaching before. So MIT, uh, so AMP was a course where I went through one on one uh, coaching experience and that was amazing the kind of stupid questions that I used to ask or you know get a lot of clarity around it it helped me put together my thought process a lot I was scattered I was scattered in my thinking but I think slowly with a lot of conversations and uh, coach was uh, one of my coach and uh, uh, I, I kind of I mean he might have seen me from an absolutely unstructured scattered to kind of trying to uh, get composed uh, through the process. So, you know, it's important because all of us come with a lot of thoughts. And I think it's very important to kind of uh, clean it up and then focus, hyper-focus before we are trying to land up on yeah. something. One-on-one -on -one coaching was a great experience for me, Kaur. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that, Mahua. Um, so uh, maybe you could show them a little bit about what you've been doing with the platform company that you mentioned. Because uh, you didn't know that you were going to build such a platform until you began thinking about it a little bit and talking with people and exploring various uh, problem spaces. And then once you've done that, I'm, I'm hoping you'll talk a little bit about now it's three years since you were here. What strikes you now as important uh, that you that you still have with you um, that, that you've gotten value from? Sure. So let's go so, to the next slide. Yeah, there we go. Good. Yeah. So... And it changed so much. So, so while I was at uh, AMP, I, I fairly had an idea that I wanted to build a platform. 
uh, where I can partner directly with uh, women professionals and with enterprises organizations uh, where we are trying to build equitable workplaces. So that was my overall theme. So uh, there is a you know, lack of balance uh, where we are, especially um, you know, at a senior level. And, and that we see everywhere. I think most of you who are joining can think in your mind that in your leadership levels, there is possibly max 15 to 20 person women leaders that you see. Uh, so my intent of this uh, platform is to how do we build that pipeline of women talent um, across the globe so that we see a fairly equitable workplace uh, and inclusive workplaces uh, going forward. Uh, at that point in time, when I was at AMP, and, and, and I'll always connect to AMP because that's more important for the listeners, is I had no idea on this multiple sides of platform and how those platforms interact with it. So those networks interact with each other and helps kind of grow that. So we have three sides of the platform on, on the Star and Me. One is women professionals, second is organizations, and thirds are the leadership experts who are on the platform. They are actually the heartbeat of the platform who kind of uh, help bring in those nuggets of information and knowledge and help build that leadership skills. Um, as we speak uh, today, and I possibly am covering a little bit of the next slide also over here, is uh, you know from the time we started to till date, we have close to 7,000 plus women from 65 countries on the platform. We work with some of these logos that you can see some of the marquee clients um, uh, who we are diversity partners with them in India to get started off with because me and my team are in India. And we have been able to onboard the third side of the platform, which is the global experts. Uh, so we have 90 plus experts today from uh, across 15 countries who are on the platform. They are the ones who impart those leadership trainings and workshops. And, you know, it can range from an emotional intelligence to a conversational intelligence to negotiation skills, but in nuggets, right? I mean, nuggets of what helps build uh, a leadership quotient uh, for women talent. And uh, we've possibly done more than um, uh, 350 global leadership programs. Uh, but what comes back is uh, to the program is when I used to talk to Rene Goslin on how do I build, uh, reduce friction on the platform for the users and build that customer experience. It's a long way. It's a long way. We've just started. In fact, the three sides of the platform that you see today, I showed you, we just have two, side of the, two sides of them on the platform now. The third side of the platform, which is organizations, is still off the platform. There is part of the Me ecosystem, but they're not on the technology platform. So, so this is a long journey. We know about it. As we speak today, where we lie is Maybe with whatever intervention I've got through AMP, I've come till this level and it was needed. Uh, we are now doing good at our enterprise business. But as I said, building a, a, a thriving, engaging, uh, scalable um, D2C, direct-to-consumer platform it is a is is a big thing and we are going back and forth on it and we are trying to focus on certain aspects of it so that we are able to catapult and scale and this is one place and i again come back and see my notes okay what was written what else can i do through the mit ecosystem now uh to kind of uh, yeah. uh you know ramp up my learning and 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 make it happen so yeah, I would I would kind of uh, keep a pause on what I'm doing. Any specific question, Cody would want to trigger my thoughts on. I would love to add it. The first thing I want to say, just uh, Mahu, is it, you've running a platform, creating a platform, and running it is one of the most difficult management jobs there is. You have to know so much more about the marketplace and what a user right. might want to do on the platform before you even get started. Sure. It's a super challenging thing, which is one of the reasons I'm just so amazed and proud of what you've been able to accomplish so far. It's it's really um, striking, and uh, you have you have. Um, built an amazing ecosystem just around the, the platform, but the corporates, the experts, uh, and then the um, the women executives themselves. It's really uh, extraordinary. Um, what I'm hoping is, I know that this you're, you're continuing the journey um, and you have a plan for that, but I'm wondering, as you reflect back on your experience of the AMP, Mahua, is there something now that you appreciate that maybe you wouldn't have, you know, that at day 
after the five weeks, maybe if we saw you the first week afterwards, you would say, oh, I liked this or I didn't like that. But now it's three years later. And what's striking to you? Is it some of what you said before about the the, the network yeah. that you've built? And what, what would you add that you yeah. haven't said so far? So one is, I mean, uh, there's so much. I don't think I've, one thing is I wouldn't have the confidence to get started on such a complex journey. Uh, I think that confidence, it's, it's some, not something that I can understand while I'm going through it, the yes. five weeks, but something that changes something inside you, it's very difficult to explain, but it happens when you know that you have gone, you have part of an ecosystem like um, where, you know, you have the access to that network. I think that gives you that confidence. And obviously, along with the knowledge that the faculty has given and, and, and the different curriculum. So when you kind of uh, zoom out and try to see it, I, I think it changes. It's very difficult for me to explain. It changes a lot because one is it needs a lot of confidence to start building platforms. It's not easy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so So uh, I, I really put it very much above the knowledge nuggets. Um, and, and if we, I would have seen in 2018, May, would I have ever thought of building a platform solution? Possibly no, I did not have that understanding. Uh, MIT bring, being the core place of platform strategy solutions from Professor Kusumano to Professor Perez and everybody. So it's those rich conversations and confidence of people around. There's something in that air quote, I can't explain. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of gets inside... Uh, 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 you know, the, the students uh, and the cohort. And I think that changes something in you, which gives you that confidence to build. Now, from three years down the line, as I said, I'm one of those who has always come back to the network, always come back to the AMP ecosystem through you and, you know, others trying to rebound, reflect and get uh, resources whenever I have needed and have gotten that. I do not know if I was, wasn't part of this uh, program, how would I have been able to leverage mm -hmm. some of these, right? So that's, that's always been at my backyard that I kind of, I can reach if I want to. Uh, if I wouldn't have been part of this, possibly I wouldn't have been able to reach uh, some of the conversation that I have with you are uh, at a strategy level and the thought process level and talking to you on an ongoing basis definitely helps me kind of build that. Yeah. So that's um, invaluable. I don't think uh, is that value that somebody gets. Uh, and I keep telling it's not a five uh, week relationship. It's a lifelong relationship, uh, but totally depends on how you want to nurture like every other relationship, uh, yeah. how you would want to nurture that relationship and build that relationship and, you know, keep giving, keep taking. It's, it's, it's a mutual uh, relationship that you have to build. And the ecosystem is there with wealth of knowledge, with wealth of information, with wealth of resources. But it's something that we as adults have to go back and forth to do it. Yeah. So one, obviously, is the frameworks, uh, the faculty that we can still leverage, um, uh, uh, you know, the resources that we can still leverage. Uh, that that's amazing. I mean, that's not something I don't think I would have been able to do it if yeah. I wasn't part of uh, AMP. Today, also, if I reach, I the first line of my email is always, I am from AMP, batch of 2018. And that's what people understand or kind of connect immediately with. And similarly to the alum network, as I talked about Mariana's example, and there are many others that we have been speaking, some relationships, some you know, some uh, uh, converge into partnerships, some do not. That's fair enough. But you at least get those opportunities of conversations. Yeah. So that's amazing. So, yeah. So uh, thank you for talking about that a little bit. I'm noticing people from all around the world, India, Mexico, Denver, here in the U.S., uh, Brazil. Yeah. I'm mentioning I'm mentioning you that if those of you have put where you're coming, uh, calling in from just because I'm going to we're going to open it up for your questions in a moment. So I just wanted you to have them ready. Uh, for Mahua and for me. Uh, thank you, uh, Jiro uh, from uh, Charleston, West Virginia. Um, I just want to just say a couple things more about the takeaways and uh, then Ant will open it up for any uh, questions. I'll, I'll say a couple things about how to apply logistics types of things. So um, Mahua mentioned that uh, the takeaway is the strong connection with other people. Uh, she and this the, and the confidence that she had to take this uh, forward, her ideas forward. Um, the interesting thing to me is she talked about something you don't hear many people talk about, which is 
and it's not on the slide either. Uh, she talked about something in the air. So I just wanted to call that out because there is something about MIT air that gives you confidence, that gives you some sense of, I don't know how to solve this problem, but I know there's a way to begin to attack it. And uh, it's just in the, the water, the air is just sort of in everything that we do here at MIT. So you, you tend to see it in little concrete bits, as it says here on the slide, in the frameworks, uh, some of the tools, um, examples that we give. Um, you can see it in the fact that we're going to, we in the AMP, we show things that are tried and true, but also cutting edge research about what management practices seem to be succeeding now, like digital transformation, innovation practices, things like that, that we weren't seeing even 10, five, 10 years ago. Um, uh, and so, the, and then, as it says on the right side of the slide here, um, there's a variety of uh, connections to MIT through email, through the Sloan, the Business School Alumni Network. MIT is a different network, but the Sloan Alumni Network. And then uh, future learning activities. Um, uh, and so you become part of the Sloan uh, Alumni Network uh, once you've graduated from the AMP. The, um, the next slide has a couple of uh, comments and a picture of a typical cohort. This is from, uh, I, I, know, I think this is the year before yours, Mahua. Um, but the, so 2017, you can see roughly the size of it. It's intimate, um, it's global. Uh, in this uh, picture, it's mostly men, but there are six women that were part of this particular group. We'd like to even that out a little bit. This is where we and Mahua share a similar agenda. Uh, and so um, if you're a woman and who's listening, just know that we other women have attended and uh, gotten value from this. And we welcome that and try to do everything we can to make it great for you while you're here. Um, and then let me just talk a little bit about how to apply uh, the final slide, and then we'll open it up uh, for your questions for the remaining time. Um, and what you need to do is if you're interested in this at all, and you think you might meet the, some of the basic criteria, work experience, the kind of job you have now, uh, your appetite to work on yourself, um, as it says on the next slide, there's a website you can go to where you can learn more. Um, and uh, you'll We'll ask you to join the community, give us a little bit of information. It's not hugely invasive, just about you and what you're trying to do. Um, and then it, we ask you four or five questions about why you're interested in the AMP and ask you to submit your CV or your LinkedIn profile. Uh, and then we interview everybody who comes because we want to make sure that people are coming who fit the profile that we're looking for, um, who come with the right attitude um, and who are who have carved out the time to be here at MIT. What we can't have is people who are trying to do simultaneously learning and transformation uh, with us and then also doing their jobs. It takes everybody's level down if you're sort of in two places. So we ask people to sort of carve out the time to be here so they can be fully present psychically, emotionally, intellectually with us and then um, we welcome people to bring their families if they want to, particularly near the end. Um, we don't want you to live like monks, but the, um, the the point is that we want you to be able to focus on what we're doing and to be able to help other people and to be in relationship with them. So that's why we interview everyone to make sure that you're clear about that, that you share some of the same agendas that we have about wanting to, that believing in the fact that what made you successful to this point may or may not be what you need to be a success in, uh, and an effective leader in the future. So that's what the interviewing is about. Um, I do some of the interviews and then I have a colleague who does some of the interviews and then together we meet and compare notes. That's really what's involved. And the, the goal is to bring people together from all over the world who seek that kind of transformation learning, who believe in lifelong learning and who are going to apply it in big complicated um, uh, jobs, uh, in the future that, that could really make a difference to society. So that's uh, that's the goal, that's how to do it. You see the website there. Uh, we can put this in the chat, I think as well, um, as well as some of the answers to the questions I think we're gonna put in the chat or at least say out loud uh, here. So we're right on the time that we had allotted, maybe a little past it. 
uh, that's my fault, uh, Mavua, not you. Uh, but we have about 15 minutes for questions. And I'm wondering if there are any, just put them into the comments section. Um, and uh, we'll try to respond as best we can in real time. And again, before, while you're thinking about that, I just want to say it's so great to see people from all over the world joining us at all different hours. Um, uh, I know it's late for some of you that are in South America and it's early for Mahua. Uh, so we're trying to do our best in the global, the globalized environment we're working in. So any questions about this has, uh, or comments? Has this been helpful, useful? What else would you like to know? So possibly when people are planning to put in their questions, uh, maybe Court, you would want to answer on... Um, oh, uh, I see. Yeah. yeah. I just, uh, I see that uh, we've got some, uh, we have quite a few folks who have joined. Uh, but what, uh, what I've been asked to talk about is an advanced degree required. Um, I'm not, generally speaking, the people that come do have at least an MBA, but, uh, and that's helpful. That says something about commitment to learning and maybe some business experience. But more important for us is the kind of work experience that you've had. Um, so the, we don't, we tend to not worry so much about items on your CV, um, sort of, uh, uh, archetypes, you know, I, I passed this test, I passed that test, I got through this sorting hat at this university that everyone has heard of. I worry less about that. I worry more about your motivation for coming and the experience that you had. And the reason I do that is to make sure that you can contribute to the conversations that we're having in the room. If you've got great degrees, but haven't got a lot of work experience, it's just not that helpful to, for you to be in the room. Um, one other, uh, I've seen some questions in the comments. I'll get to the faculty question uh, in the moment. Um, could there is you... a question from Fiona. Uh... Yeah. Good, yeah. Um, yeah, so Fiona, you asked about if and when A&P is available via online delivery. And so we are building a hybrid offering. We'll never have it be fully online. All the market research that we have, all the interviews that we've done, it's a lot of learning. It's 25 days. Um, and so doing that fully online is a problem for a lot of the people that are very that are senior executives with a lot of work experience. So we're thinking that hybrid is the better way to go and that we're planning on offering the first module will be two weeks at MIT and then there'll be two weeks uh, online and then people will come back for the final week at MIT. That's the current uh, plan, but we're still building it, but nothing's going to happen in that space, Fiona, uh, unfortunately, until um, September of next year is the earliest we can get that sort of built and ready to go. Hope that was helpful. Uh, let's see. Fernando, I think. It's the next yeah, one. Fernando, thank you, Mahua. How are you considering to handle the next AMP program regarding COVID travel restrictions? Well, that's a, that's an interesting question. Because and we think we have an answer, but as you know, Fernando, I'm sure the uh, the it's a dynamic world and it's changing. But right now, we are already delivering learning in the classroom for executives, um, and so there's some masking rules. There's some for any program longer than a week, which this is. There's some testing requirements. We require everyone to be vaccinated. Um, and then the visa things, they're really, that's an important thing in order to be able to come to the U.S. if you're coming from outside the U.S. Um, and so that, I, I don't know what to tell you. Each country is so different in terms of the visa process, but you need a visa, you need proof of vaccination, you need to agree to, to sort of the day-to-day the -day operating rules, which revolve around a periodic test regimen and then mask wearing. Uh, and we're making that work right now with both MBA students and with uh, executive education students. Hope that was helpful, Fernando. Did I, did I cover what you were asking about? Just put it into the chat, if not. Um, oh, and Fiona joined us from Australia. I had missed that, and I'm just so glad that someone from down under could join. Thank you. Um, and Sridhar, we will have this as a recording. Um, it surprises me that anyone would uh, want to go back and listen to all 60 minutes of this. Um, 
I see some other questions that typically come up um, too, um, about one about the faculty and one about what differentiates this. I've mentioned a couple of things, but let me just go a little bit deeper on that and maybe that'll spark some additional questions. Um, the first is, and I think Mahua spoke to this a little bit herself, which is that the faculty is super experienced. Many of them have written the ER textbook on systems thinking or innovation or uh, in Mahua's case, um, the author of a book called Disciplined Entrepreneurship, Bill Ouellette, was particularly helpful to her. And um, so these are experienced people who have done what we're talking about in the classroom or who've consulted to policymakers and C-suite executives. That's who the faculty is. And it comes from a wide variety of disciplines across both the Sloan School, the business school, and also other parts of MIT. They might come from the engineering school, the nano lab, or the media lab. So it's a full institute delivery in terms of faculty. Uh, the other question was about differentiation, this AMP versus others. First is, I'll say, is it's the intimacy of the cohort. I keep coming back to that. That's Most other AMPs have at least double the number of students. It's not as intimate. It's unusual. Uh, for people to have one-on-one -on -one coaches and get 360 feedback in most AMPs. There is one other that I know of that has that. Um, the, um, we do a lot in the classroom, but also we take people out of the classroom into the ecosystem and to get them connected with MIT and the sort of the environment around us. Um, so, And then it's also about the cohort. And so what we're trying to do is put together a diverse group of people that share a common mentality, a common approach, and a common set of goals about what they want to learn and get out of the course and why they want to be at MIT. So the cohort is the other thing that really differentiates uh, the program. Did I miss anything important, Mahua? While I look at the questions here, maybe you want to come in? Yeah, no, no, I think you have covered the uh, court. Um, I, I think uh, many might have attended a lot of uh, fully online programs uh, at MIT, uh, but I think there's a huge difference in experience uh, when you think about being an AMP uh, versus uh, doing a 100% online experience. And I think while we were going, I'm actually chatting with a few people on LinkedIn who are attending this course. So I was just talking to one of them who said <laughs> that they're, he's doing He's doing full-time online uh, certification programs at MIT Sloan, and I was just trying to explain how it's quite different in an AMP, which where you actually get this cohort uh, and the relationships, which possibly you might not get in an only online uh, yeah. uh, kind of courses. Yeah, where it's kind of a dark box. Yeah. Um, I see a question from Ricardo about credits. Um, it sounds like, Ricardo, you might have been to other MIT Sloan executive education courses. It does help if you know how we work um, and can talk a little bit about what you've taken away from those programs. But sometimes people think of credits like uh, in the U.S. we have this advanced placement programs that if you're a high school student and you take those programs, you can opt out of certain courses when you get to college. That's not the case with the AMP. So it's not like you can skip a part of the AMP because you went to another course. Um, so I'm not quite sure from which direction you're asking the question. Uh, Fernando, I see your question here about the cost of attending. I can say that here, it's on the website. It's $65,000 to attend. That covers everything, including room and board. Um, if you don't want to, we put everybody up in a, uh, uh, it's a, a kind of hotel It has rooms that are suites with a kitchen. It's a little bit bigger, so you can be here with us for five weeks. That's included in the 65,000. Uh, um, and so really the only cost you have are some dinners, what you do on the weekends, entertainment like that. But basically everything that goes on during the learning week, Monday through Friday, is covered pretty much by the $65,000 tuition. Hope that was helpful. Fernando, that's this. Oh, okay. You did cover it. What the investment? Yeah. All right. And so um, I mentioned accommodations are included. Another, how much evening and weekend work is there? I love that question uh, because the I mentioned earlier that we don't use the case method that much, and in, in which people are 
preparing cases into the night that they'll use in the end. Um, we tend not to use cases that much. We want people to go home and rest, to talk with their family, talk with their a little bit with their work, not too much. Um, so we do do things at night, but not every night. Uh, they'll be reading some nights, but not all nights. Um, so it's rigorous in the overall experience, but it's not like we are working you to the bone uh, throughout the experience. We're working hard. It's intense. Um, it's uh, you feel depleted by the end. I know I do. I think Mahua did as well. But the um, it's not about you know working you morning, noon, and night. We want you. We actually teach a segment on how to balance rest and uh, in order to be able to manage your uh, resilience. Uh, let's see here. A couple of questions, Paul. Yeah. Uh, Piotr, um, hi from Singapore. Uh, I mentioned a little bit about the AMP and how it's different uh, just a moment ago. Um, I'll just do it again for, uh, just quickly for you. It's about the size of the cohort, max 35. Other AMPs have double uh, or sometimes uh, two, uh, not only double, but two and a half times uh, the size of the course that we have. Um, there's also just our methods, which I was talking about a moment ago. We don't use the case method that heavily. It's very applied, hands-on. Let's go out into the market, see how things work. Um, and then it's the cohort and the MIT uh, ecosystem that's around us that we put people in touch with. So um, I, I think those are the major differentiators. As you said, the size of the cohort matters a lot, right? That kind of uh, uh, enables a lot of conversations within the network and possibilities that carve out of it. Uh, and the discussions hence kind of go much deeper because everybody kind of gets uh, a chance to talk from their industry perspective and that builds in uh, that knowledge base. Yeah. Uh, Giro, I see your question about the ecosystem at MIT and how did it get established? That's actually a topic in the course. I'll just say a couple of quick things about it. Part of what goes on around MIT, you'll see this here. It's part of what Mahua mentioned being in the air. There's just a very tight connection between the five major stakeholders in an innovation ecosystem. You've got government here, you've got engineering and science order, uh, oriented uh, academia. So those two stakeholders, you have startups, you have large companies, and then you have risk capital, venture, private equity. They're all like right here on top of each other. And that's why it's so intense and vibrant. But there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, there's sort of a flavor to the ecosystem here. It's different than, for example, Palo Alto or parts of Israel. Uh, which have their own, but it, what they all have in common are the tight connection between those five stakeholders. Is it more technology-driven agenda? I would say probably yes. Um, the we spend we, technology is basically woven into everything that we do. What I think you you would not be surprised by that, Piotr, but uh, what you would be surprised by is the amount of people content that's in the course. And most people don't think of MIT that way, so I wanted to mention it. Uh, and so we're not gonna talk about technology and science and biology all the time, uh, but that'll be there. Um, it, we just can't help it. But the we spend a lot of time, and many people don't know, but like the Ur textbook on culture, on enterprise leadership, on teaming, a lot of the thought leaders in those spaces are teaching now at MIT. Uh, I'm not referring to myself. I, I'm talking about other people you'll see in the program, all right? I'm not doing a subtle little uh, brag there. I'm just saying there's a lot of expertise at MIT around quote unquote soft or uh, ambiguous, foggy kinds of issues. So some good thinking there too. In fact, I wanted to add uh, court to the question is it's predominantly application of technology versus uh, kind of going. So how do you integrate technology uh, in the industry? And and the and the way you are, I think, your mind opens up when you get exposed to the latest research. So there will be a lot of uh, guest lectures done by the latest research in the different labs at MIT. Um, that opens up your thought process in whichever field that you are working. So it's in the five weeks, you might not learn a lot of technology, but then an integrated approach is what you're going to visualize yeah. through it. 
So let me just do a couple, a couple of quick things and summarize. Uh, I think that's a great point, Mohua. We're not going to teach you, for example, the, the metaphors. We're not going to teach you how to code, how to work in Python or R, which are key to doing artificial intelligence, machine learning. But we are going to talk about what problems can the, those kinds of technologies solve and how do you evaluate the work of the coders. Um, that's an important management skill. Uh, how do you frame the problems they work on? How do you evaluate the work? How do you act as a leader around that work? That's so technology in that sense, but not the actual delivery of uh, or, or the creation of the technology. Um, and so um, I can go on a great length about the program. I've been doing it for 10 years um, and it has evolved uh, as we've responded to what people want to get out of it. Um, Happy to talk more if you'd like. I just want to say thanks for joining all of you. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find Mohua on LinkedIn, I think. And we're both uh, sort of tuned in there. Um, and our contact information, <laughs> for better or worse, is out there on the web as well. So I just want to say thank you for joining. I hope this was useful to you. Um, we're sort of looking for needles in haystacks. Uh, in the sense that this isn't for everybody. This is for a special group of people with a special sort of set of objectives and past work experiences. And if you think you're one of them, I hope you'll apply because we love talking about this and we love meeting people from all over the world. All right. So thanks for joining. Uh, hope to see you at some point in the future. And Mahua, thanks to you for joining from early day, early in the day at uh, in Bangalore. Really a pleasure to see you again. Pleasure is all mine. And uh, thank you for those amazing questions, everybody. All the best for your application. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.